You drive a fly. Yeah. Morning. Morning. Welcome Morning. to the Dispensational Bible Church where we study the whole Bible, the Bible's own way. And we are excited for another day of grace. And we, if you have your red books, be turning the page. Um, 473. 473. When heaven came down. 473. We'll sing one and three. Lesson uh, nine and uh, last uh, last lesson we talked about the signs of heaven and how God the Creator uh, used them to show doctrine until the revelation of His Word is here. We understand if you look at the stars today, they they're really corrupt. Uh, why is that? Why why is the the heavens that God created now when you look at them they're 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 telling a different story? Satan's, Satan's domain there. He he has the power there. We're, Go to Genesis chapter 1. Genesis chapter 1 is where we left off last week. And uh, that, that's something to think about because people's always trying to read t cards. They're trying to read signs. They're trying to look at astrology and all that stuff. And it's telling a different story. In fact, a lot of that stuff don't even come true. We, we think about that. Genesis 1 verse 17. We're, uh, we're going to look at life now uh, in, a, in, a, in a sense. Verse 17, And God set them in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon the earth 
and to rule over the day and over the night and to divide the light from the darkness. And God saw it was good. And the evening and the morning was were the what? The fourth, fourth day. And God said, let the waters bring forth abundantly the uh, moving creatures that have life and fowl that may fly above the earth in the open firmament of the heaven. Now, the beginning of the fifth day in verse 20 is the first time life is mentioned in the Bible. It's not the first time everything, the first time uh, anything ever lived, but it's the first time life is mentioned. So if you go se talk about seven days together, and at the beginning of the fifth day, life shows up. The reason for that is because <clears throat> in the seventh day of creation, we now can look back and see that the way he laid out it comes for the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ over there. And you go 4,000 years, then the beginning of the fifth day, the fifth of 1,000 years, life shows up, okay? Just like, you know, going down, life shows up. Uh, and here, here is when the Lord Jesus Christ comes back over there, that when you think about all this chart area. Then you run into two more days, and you have the second coming of Jesus Christ, the middle and the rest of the seventh day. That's Hebrews chapter 4. God works by sevens in the Bible. We know that. And you can take a time period, um, of, uh, days five and six, and trace them to Hosea 6 in the prophetic system. So what you're doing when we go through uh, Genesis chapter 1, you're beginning to get the layout of everything that is going to follow. Okay, that's what's laid out and it's going to follow. The focus in Genesis chapter 1 is on the earth. From Genesis 1-1, to Genesis 1-2, all the way we know all the way over to Acts chapter 9, the focus is on the earth. Now, in the religious system out there today, where's everybody's focus is at? Mm -hmm. Think about think about before you understood right division, where was you taught that your focus and all the things that you're, you're learning pertaining to what? Well, the, the, the religious system today focuses on the earth on the earth so 90 so 90 of people will tell you prophetic program god's still working in the prophetic program that's what i'm talking about they don't they don't recognize the distinction between paul so they're going your focus is on building a kingdom on earth okay <laughs> your church is on earth you can, we're praying our, our father who art in heaven how be the name Thy kingdom come or will be done on heaven as, on earth as it is in what? Heaven. They're praying everything to come to this earth. Their focus is on this earth. But you know by understanding right division, God made a distinction from the very first verse in your Bible between what? The heaven and earth. And the layout of the earthly program is beginning to be right here where we're at. You cannot recognize it. Uh, but once you go further along and look back, you see what God is doing and working things out. Because when you read it, it's like, okay, what's the big deal? And you don't understand what he's doing with the earth right there. He hung earth out of the north unto nothing. Okay? The earth is right there. Verse 21. And God created whales. You know, the whale is the only creature that he tells you that uh, the uh, the actual name, name. name. and every th living creature that moved, which uh, the waters brought forth abundantly after their kind, and every winged fowl after his kind, and God <coughs> saw it was good, and God blessed them, saying, "Be fruitful and multiply, and fill the waters of the seas, and let the fowl multiply in the earth." And the evening and the morning were the fifth day. And God said, let the earth bring forth living creatures after his kind, cattle and creeping things, and the beasts of the, uh, of the earth after his kind, and it was so. And God made the beasts of the earth after his kind, and the cattle after their kind, and everything that, that creepeth upon the earth after his kind, and God saw it was good. Again, the well is the only thing that he named. Everything else is just mentioned generally. And uh, I don't know if you, uh, why it is, but in Matthew chapter 20, uh, Matthew chapter 12, verse 4, 
What does he say about Jonah? It was three days and three nights and what? Right. Well, not the big fish, but the whale's belly. Yeah, yeah. And the whale, and there is a contention on whether or not if it, it was a whale, but what did God say it was? It was a whale. A whale. So shall son of man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. Uh, when you're writing about creation, God says to Moses, write it down. What type of animal? Whale. And there in Genesis. So when you go to, over to Jonah and God is going to prepare a uh, great fish for Jonah and he gets over here, what does he say it was? A whale. And, you know, people will, you know, will not have a problem with Matthew 12, believing it. You just got to believe that it's a whale, that type of thing. Now, again, notice in verse 20, um, 24 and 25. There, there is not any evolution there. It is after his kind. There is no room for all that stuff there. You know that, okay? Uh, you know, I know, I know. People talks about theory and evolution and and bringing up to the mud puddle and all that stuff, and, and that's not true. God created, and He created it for a reason. Then you think about the crown of creation. This brings us to the crown of creation. Everything else has been created. Now God said, let us, verse 26, which is an indication of one person or more than one person? Multiple. Okay. Genesis 1, verse 26. And God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea over the fowl of the air over the cattle over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth so god created man in his own image in the image of god created he him male and free female created he what them this is the creation of men guys gals it is a strip it's a destruction description when man was created when you get over in chapter 2 you'll see a description of how man was created but in Genesis 1 it's when they was created and there's supposed to be a contradiction in between one and chapter 1 and chapter 2 but in chapter 1 man comes on the at the end of the creative week in chapter 2 you start out with man in chapter 1, he comes at the end of the crowning achievement, the crown of creation, the head of creation. God created all these things, and then he created man. That's the end of it. That's the head of it. In chapter 2, he, he comes on at the beginning because it is the starting point of human history, the establishment of the race uh, that is the issue. Chapter 2, you're looking at a man in a relationship not to the creator about him, creation about him, but to God, to God's purpose and God's activity with man. <clears throat> you think about it for a second, one good reason of chapter 1, when he describes the detail of creation, not to have man present until the end, because you know what man would do? If he was there with God, when God was creating the whale and creating the cattle, and creating the fish, and creating, you know what man would have probably done? Stuck his nose in it. Look what I did. Look what I helped God do. <laughs> How many people you know today that wants help God in everything out there? <laughs> How many people today think they can help God uh, about salvation? That we need to help God. God finished salvation. All we have to do is just share it, what he did at Calvary for everybody. That ain't much to us. That's why when he told Job, where were you? That's right. Where we talked you? about that before. Where was you when I did this, this, this? Job, what did he say? Uh, I wasn't. You know, so, so notice in chapter 1, verse 27, so God created man, male and free female, created he them. You just see the event of the two of them together. In chapter 2, you'll see Adam was created. Eve was in Adam. God takes Eve out of Adam, and you'll see why those things take place. 
So there's no contradiction here. In chapter 1, you'll see man as the crown, the head of creation, and you see God's commission to him as that. Chapter 2, you'll see the part of the human history, the institutions that God established to help humans in their history. Okay? Uh, uh, so, Genesis 1 and 2 are, are, is really a fascinating read, and it only takes a couple minutes to read it. Think about it. And yet, uh, the ramifications there are just tremendous. Verse 26 again. And God said, let us, that's every indication there's a trinity there. Let us, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit are all manifested, clearly identified in all, in all Old Testament. And there's a very first indication of it. Make man in our image after our likeness and let him have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle, and all over the earth and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. Notice, man is called what? What's that last word in that verse? In verse 27. Male and female? Them. Woman, a man with a womb is part of the man. And Genesis chapter 1 verse 27 says, So God created man in, in his own image. In the image of God created he, him. Male and female created he, them. So man is made in the image and the likeness of God. And, there, and, that, makes a and that makes man different from an animal. Now you know people out there, you, you look at people, man, you're just an animal. <laughs> You know, the goat, greatest of all time, and it's a goat, that type of thing. Man is different than animals, whether you like it or not, you are. Animals have a spirit, they have a soul, but they were not created in the image and the likeness of Almighty God. We looked at that before, they probably a certain type of dog was on the, uh, on the ark, but most breeds of dogs today, they're made that way. You know what I mean? They, they, it, uh, I guess you could say engineered, uh, bred, bred, right. bred right. that way. Yeah, yeah, bred that way. In man's creation, he is akin to, uh, to God himself, and that is greatly, that's a greatly debated topic. What does it mean to be created in the image of God? You ever thought about that? When you look at us right now, each one of us is, uh, is different, whether you like it or not. But how are we created in the image of God? Think about that for a minute. The whole world is out there, but are they, are they pertaining to be images of God? What is the image of God supposed to look like? In, in Luke chapter uh, 20, it's kind of like a, what an image is. I mean, if, if you think about it, and get Genesis 5. I can read 20, Luke 20. I'll read Luke 20, 24. says, he says, show me a penny. Whose image is on that uh, subscription half it? They answered and said it was what? Caesar's. Caesar's. So the image of the coin indicates who the co coin belongs to. And when God created man in his own image, it indicates who man belonged to. And who it had, was related to. You with me? So when he created Adam, it's the image of God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. And it's going to be like God. Listen, when God, when before the fall, they were shining, the glory of God was on Adam and Eve. You with me on that? They look just like the God. Genesis chapter 5, verse 1. Genesis chapter 5, verse 1. This is the book of the generations of Adam. <clears throat> in the day that God created man, in the likeness of God made he him. Male and female created he them, and blessed them, and called their name Adam, in the day that when they were created. 
And Adam lived 130 years and begot a son in his own likeness after his image and called his name Seth. So you have God created Adam mm -hmm. in his own image. Now you got Adam created someone in his own likeness and his image and he called him Seth. But something happens after the fall and an image of God that he originally created in man <coughs> is effaced. It's not erased or destroyed, but in faith. It's marred. That's like what I talked about when he created Adam. It was in his likeness. The glory of God was on that man. And then after the fall, it becomes what? He lost the spirit of God, right? He fought, he fall. So what happened? The image of comes after Adam is marred. We're marred when you're lost, a man. It is not completely gone or eliminated. But it's a face. It has been distorted, messed up, and perverted. So Adam bears children in his likeness in his own fallen condition. He has a fallen offspring. That's what we talk about. We have a sin nature. We're born with a sin nature. That's from Adam. In Genesis chapter 9, verse 6. Genesis chapter 9, verse 6. Who sheddeth man blood? By man shall his blood be shed, and for in the image of God made he man. This reference back to original reference, if you kill a man, what's supposed to happen to you? Capital punishment. Capital punishment is a result because man is in a, made in the image of God, and in the image of God made he man, now, the image is effaced, but the image is still there, and hence the institution of capital punishment starts out here. Go to Acts chapter 17. Acts chapter 17. chapter 17 Acts chapter 17 uh, the first nine cha uh, verses the Thessalonian church is there and then uh, verses 10 through 12 the Brian church is there and we're going to verse 28 there's three types of uh, people there in, in Acts 17 but anyway uh, here, here, here's a verse Paul's talking verse 28 for in him we live and move and have our being. As certain also of your own poets has said, for we are also his, his offspring. That's God's offspring. For as much then as we are the offspring of God, we ought not to think that the Godhead is like to gold, silver, or stone, graven by art and man's device. There's a similarity between man and God there, aren't there? Man is called the offspring of God. And Paul could say that the Athenians here were the offspring of God. And that's through who? Adam. But they're marred. Was Athenians, was people in Athens saved at this point? Who was they worshiping? Uh, the Ra. Ra, the unknown God. In Luke chapter uh, 3, verse 31, I'll read that to you. And was the son of Enos, which was the son of Seth, which was the son of Adam, which was the son of God. <clears throat> That's something to think about, isn't it? Adam is identified as who? Son of God. The son of God. And you can be the son of God in two ways. You can be born into the family of God, and be born a son 
or you can be created son, and that is what Adam was. Adam was the only human that God that was created the son of God. The only human. Angels are called sons of God because they are created by his hands. But Adam is the only human. Okay? You read in the Bible, the sons of God came down and talked with daughters of men. Those are those angels. Mm -hmm. And you are the offspring of God. The offspring of God by creation. The fact that you have the unique relationship to God that no one else has has to do with the fact that you would create a certain way that gives us a, 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 a identity, identity different and distinct from animals. That's what I'm talking about. Everybody in, in this, everybody that's born has a God conscience inside of them. Okay? They are searching for God, but their spirit's cut off. Your thinking, your spirit's right here. The real you is right here, your soul. Then you have that body. And 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 man being created in the image of God basically is, is the issue of man being created as a trinity. Trichology, they call it tri tri trichology. I can't pronounce half these words. <laughs> But the, the details of the actual comp composition and fo formation of God, Adam, given in Genesis uh, chapter 2, you notice he created a three-part being here. You mentioned a while ago, spirit, soul, body. It's not body, soul, spirit. That's backwards. It's spirit, soul, body. And he is created as God. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. God is a spirit. According to John chapter 4, verse 24, right? He is also, he, he has a soul. Matthew chapter 12, verse 18. And he has a body. Exodus chapter 24, verse tw uh, 10, and Revelation 4 and 5. He has a body of a heaven, a place where God, he manifested his person in a body. John says, the lamb took the, the book out of the right hand of him, that set up on the throne, Revelation over, over there. Uh, on slot, me and uh, what was talking about uh, <coughs> Paul going to third heaven. And he mentioned Peter. Did Peter go to third heaven? Peter didn't get to third, third heaven. But who else went up in there? John the Revelator. And he wrote the things that he just said. He said a lamb gave him the book. Now, was that an animal? No. It was, it was, it was God. Remember, remember John the Baptist said, Behold, the Lamb of God that taketh away the sins of the world. Was that a four-legged lamb? He's not referring to him. How, I mean, he's not a four-legged animal. He's a Lamb of God that takes away. He's going to be sacrificed. That's what he's talking about. We're talking about the issue of God creating man in a way that, that corresponds with him. The, in the image and likeness of God. Man is not God, but he is a part. But he is not a part of God. He is a reflection of God. What does religion teach you out there? That you can become a God. What does Satan do in the uh, garden? We'll find out in, in, in lessons to come. He created so you'd be like gods. So that was already out there. And when you create gods, look at all the um, Greek gods and uh, Caesars. Most most of your king, most of your dictators are like gods, mm -hmm. you know. And human viewpoint will take God out of the way and put you up front and make you as God. I deserve this. Get away from me, peasants. You know, you got in this world today. You got people that's meeting a little group of people meeting in a country that's going to tell how the world should act and how you need to eat this and you don't need this and all that stuff. They're acting as gods. And and you know, I might have mentioned this before. You know how many billions of people are on this earth right now? Seven, eight billion. You know you can line them all up in, in, in California? 
They can stand. I, all them people can stand right in California. Where's everybody else? What, look, look the rest of the world that we know. And then you can put a house between them and be about like Texas. So, so, so when you think about how people want to be gods, they're controlling your thinking and your mind, and they're not being an image of God, the creator, they're being the image of them. Look at Nebuchadnezzar. Look at the images that they've created. Look at uh, Egypt. When they came out of Egypt, what did they do? They just <laughs> throwed everything in the fire and it popped out a, a golden calf. And then what Aaron said, no, he sat there and carved that thing. Yeah. <laughs> and that wasn't an image of God. It was an image of an animal. That's why uh, uh, I've, I'll say this once. I'll say it again. I'll say it a thousand times. The first three chapters of Genesis that we're going over, and you read the first three chapters of uh, Romans, they, they, you find out why we are the way we are. And if you teach somebody that and show them that, they can wake up and say, whoa, I need a change. Because God says you worship the creature more than the creator today. And they do. I saw an image the other day. Many of us like football. Uh, it's entertaining. I mean, we, we grew up watching football, right? And they had uh, the, uh, what do you call that? Of course, uh, the gladiators would fight in. Arena? The arena. The Colosseum. The Colosseum. And had half of the Colosseum in Caesar's day, we'll say Caesar day, and the, and the Colosseum today, and it went like that. Amen. And it was almost identical. You know, the, the football stadium? Football stadium, yeah. 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 And it was like this, and you're like, that ain't changed, guys. That ain't changed. They're worshiping. And you worship that money too, don't you? But man is not a reflection of God. It is, it, is, it is in the most basic form it has to do with man being created in the Trinity. Genesis chapter 2. Genesis chapter 2. Are you in 1 Thessalonians? Mm -hmm. We're going there. In Hebrews chapter 4, too. I'll give you a little time to get there. But Genesis chapter 2, verse 7. Let's read that first. And the Lord God formed man out of the formed man out of the dust of the ground. There's his body. Okay. And he breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. There's his spirit. And then it says, Man became a what? A living soul. Body, spirit, and soul, three parts. Now, in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 23, and the very God of peace sanctify you wholly, and I pray God your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless to the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. You see that? Spirit, soul, body. That's three. Hebrews chapter four. Hebrews chapter four, verse 12. Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12. The word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder the, spirit, the soul and the spirit and of the joints and the marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Where are the joints and marrow at? He mentioned the soul, spirit our soul and spirit, where's the joints of marrow at? In the, body. In the body. Okay? The word of God can divide asunder. It can lay it can lay open. It can make plain. It can lay it out uh, uh, for you. The spirit and soul and the joints of body and marrow. And of course, he focuses on the joints and marrow because that is where the blood comes from. And the life that is in the flesh. And you have the word of God, and you have 
you can dis uh, discriminate between those things. You know that. And uh, in fact, uh, stay in Hebrews and go to First Corinthians, First Corinthians, chapter eleven. First Corinthians chapter eleven verse seven says, "For a man indeed ought to not cover his head, for as much as he is the image and glory of God, but the woman is the glory of the man." So, who is the uh, image of the glory of God? Man. man. Now, is Paul right to a lost person, or saved person, this right? Saved, saved people. Right. So, if you're saved, you're the glory of the image of God. It's obvious that Paul was concerned where he still created the image of God here. Way, way over here in the uh, but now period, he's still concerned about that. And the image has been effaced, but it has not been eliminated and done away with completely. What happened to it? What, what happened to, in it in the fall is that the Christ-likeness was lost. And notice the image of God in your Bible defines as Jesus Christ. And that is why the Jews say the Christians are idolaters. They said it here. They say it here. If you think about the Orthodox Jew, they think you're an idolater. I haven't been pronouncing my words correctly here the last couple of 25 years. <laughs> uh, so, so they say you worship an image. Now I'm gonna ask you something. Uh, you know, you you, you, be, you don't have to answer this. What do you think Jesus Christ looks like? Do you see a long-haired Jesus with light skin and blue eyes and a pointed beard? Yeah. Long hair. hair. You hear people talk about that Jesus had long hair. There's verses in the Bible, if I'm not mistaken, that said he went in the crowds and hid and he disappeared in the crowd. Mm -hmm. Now, if he disappeared in the crowd, and if you look at mostly Roman Romans and stuff like that, they didn't have long hair. Hebrews one. Stay in uh, get Second Corinthians while you're there, and get and I told you stay in Hebrews. Get Hebrews chapter one. Hebrews chapter 1 verse 3 talking about Christ who being the brightness of his glory and the expression express image of his person and upholding all things by the word of his power when he had by himself purged our sins sat down on the right hand of the majesty and the image and express image of his person the fullness of God had to dwell in his, him bodily 2 Corinthians chapter 4. 2 Corinthians chapter 4. Second Corinthians chapter 4 verse 4. In whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ who is the image of God, shall shine unto them. The Christ-likeness is gone. It has been lost. We are not involved today in the brotherhood of man or the fatherhood of God. Y'all remember, <laughs> y'all remember Fred Sanford, Sanford and Son? Oh, yeah. Andrew. He did he love his uh, sister in law Esther? No, he, <laughs> he, did not. he he did not. He did. I listened to a little clip the other day, and he he said he, she was talking about going to a beauty contest, something like that. You know, <laughs> he, he, she, he, she talked about uh, uh, he mentioned something about Mother Nature, and he goes up. He says, "But Father Time done you in, or something like that." You know, you know everything he cut her. To the core, you know, she was like those day, those what do you call it programs? You couldn't get by with that today. 
No. No, no with not. what they said. But anyway, he, he was, when he mentioned about fatherhood, he's talking father, but father time left you behind. Or <laughs> father time's working on you now or something like that. You, but he just, God is our creator, guys. We are created in the image of God, but sin has, has, has changed that. That's why we, we look at each other and we should see Jesus Christ in us. You know, that the, when we think about things that's going on in the world, the racism and the, and the political hatred, and, you know, you know, people point fingers at If they know who you are in Christ Jesus, that's the issue. It's not this skin color. It's not the, We know we're a fallen race. And if you've got Christ inside of you, it's going to make a difference, isn't it? It's going to make a difference who you look at. It's going to make a difference who you associate yourself with, and 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 it. But but what it what it has done is the Christ likeness is gone when we're when we're, when we're in that state. The image of God is defined as Jesus Christ. It has been lost. Man is still a Trinity, and he has, still has a spirit soul and body and he's created in an image and the likeness of god and then that's always like i'm scratching my head like if we're in the image of god why do we look like the way we are we're fallen we're still here does he not does the bible, bible not promise us that he's going to change his vile body mm -hmm. into a body fashion like mm -hmm. his glorious body Amen. Yes. And, and the light that shineth in us, the glorious gospel, has changed the image of us who we were. Now, we're still walking around in this thing. And in Genesis chapter 1, verse 26, we're, we're, uh, we're still got a lot to go with this likeness. But uh, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask you this. When I mention what does Jesus Christ look like today, well, how is he manifested today? Good is he manifested? Do you got the glory of God on you right now? On me? Yes. Okay. In the uh, it, isn't it, uh, it, it, does God look at us as if we're sinners? If we're no. saved today? No. no. Does he look at you like you unworthy? No. He looks at you as a son of God. And we can call God Father. Mm-hmm. Okay, that's exciting, guys, because many of us didn't have fathers growing up. And it's sad that you didn't have a father growing up, but many of us, the father wasn't there to be that godly influence. So we can turn to God and say, God, I have a father. Okay, but look, go to Psalm, uh, Song of Solomon's chapter 5. Many people want to know what Jesus looked like, you know, uh, that type of thing. Song of Solomon chapter 5 will sh give you a picture of, what Jesus Christ looks like. Now, in the past, we've had pictures of Jesus on the uh, walls. You know, the long hair, mm -hmm. sandy hair. You know, it, it strikes me out of all these Hollywood films back in the day that the, the people that portrayed, you know, Jesus. What's that one movie that comes out around Easter time all the time? The Greatest Story Ever Told. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. What it's color shared. eyes did he have? Huh? What color eyes did he have? Blue. Blue? No. No. You sure? That's the, the, the white page show. Yeah. Movie. Yeah, and white skin, pale, you know. Right. You know what it's I'm Caucasian. getting at? Caucasian. Yeah, it's Caucasian, what I'm trying to Chef say. Chef Craig. Okay. And uh, played good part, don't get me wrong. <clears throat> but that's not who what Jesus Christ portrayed him. So when you see the blue eyes, people look at you like, you know, like, God. And then you have certain other people says, no, God was this color and God was that color. Jesus was this color, that color. You both did choose how he had looked like a Jew. Let's look, let's First see, let's, Psalm of Solomon chapter 5 is a description. Say that again. Song of Solomon chapter 5. If you got the right book, it's the uh, right Bible. It's page 708. You there? Everybody there? Psalm yeah. Solomon chapter 5? Don't wait on me. Yeah, go, go ahead and turn there. I want you to see this. But first. Well, hang on, man. Wait, wait till he gets there. Psalm of Solomon. The Psalm, the Psalm is right after uh, uh, Ecclesiastes. 
Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, and then Psalm of Solomon. Chapter 5, verse 10. Let's go to verse 10. If you want to write that down, you can look at it later. Uh, Psalm of Solomon, chapter 5, verse 10. My beloved is white and ruddy and cherished among 10,000. Verse 11. His head is the most fine gold. His locks are brushy and black as a raven. So what's what's his uh, head looks like? Dark hair. Dark hair. What's his face look like? Mm. Dark Fine and gold. Mm -hmm. Okay. And his locks are bushy and and black as a raven. <clears throat> his eyes are the eyes of a dove by the rivers of waters, washed with milk and fitly set. Now. What color does eyes a dove have? Brown. Brown. Dark. Okay. His cheeks are as a bed of spice and sweet flowers. His lips like lily, dipping sweet smelling myrrh. His hands are as gold rings set with the burl. His belly with is as bright ivory overlaid his sapphire. His legs are pillars of marble. And upon sockets of fine gold, his countenance is as Lebanon, ex excellent as the cedars. His mouth is most sweet, yea, he is altogether lovely. That's what he looks like. He has locks coming down. They're black. His skin is gold. His eyes are like a dove, dark eyes. Now, what kind of uh, nationality is that, if you want to say that? Middle East. Jewish. Middle East? Mm -hmm. Jewish. Mm -hmm. So he don't have blonde hair, blue eyes. Mm -hmm. That's why these uh, these pictures of the, even these, uh, what, is it, angels? 99% of the pictures of the angels that you see out there were over top of people's homes, over top of Jesus' uh, uh, birthplace, all that. They're blonde hair, blue eye, breasts, and have breasts, this, and, and, and two wings. That's error, guys. That's a religious system out there that's perverted the, who God looks like. So I want to ask you something before we close. And this is just to get you thinking. If you got a picture of, of Jesus Christ up there, and what does he say about images? Graven images. He says not to make graven images. Okay, anything in heaven and all that stuff you're not supposed to make. And you got a picture of Jesus Christ up there that's got long hair, and most of them doing this, you know, and he's got a pointy beard, sandy reddish, usually blue eyes, and he's doing this, and you just know that that's not Jesus Christ. And a lot of Bibles you turn into, picturettes has that type of picture of him in there. One, what should you do with it? Two, if that's not what God looks like, and you're looking for that type of God come on the scene, and you've been your image is burned inside of you and said that's what Jesus looks like, and you and and you read something different what he looks like, what do you suppose <clears throat> that the Antichrist is going to look like? You think he's going to look gold, fine gold, uh, raven, uh, black hair? Or is he going to look like the pictures that you've been burnt in your memories from the books, that uh, the false uh, books that you've been buying and the pictures and images that you've been seeing? Mm -hmm. Because when this time happens over here, he's going to, there are going to be pictures of him and you're, and you're going to know it's, and you're going to think it's Jesus Christ. Now, if you're saved today, you're not going to do that. <laughs> but the thing is, when that uh, when that opens up, and he's God's Almighty, Jesus Christ is exposed coming back to this earth. He don't look like this, and he don't look like that picture. Satan has mingled with seed to where he looks different. And so, so, so the thing is, is so when he comes back, they're going to say, no, 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 that's. That's, that's him in, in the temple because my Bible, I've got the picture of Jesus Christ, what he looks like. And when Jesus Christ comes back, 
He ain't coming back like he was over here. He's coming back with fire and vengeance, guys. I don't know how many times I've shared this with you. He's coming back with fire and vengeance. He's coming back as a man of war, a lord of war. And he's coming back to take this uh, dominion back. Okay? That's, he's going to look totally different. Fire in the eyes. He's going to go fire. And when he speaks the words, it's like a, a, a sword devouring. That should scare you. But what is, what wonder what Satan and the people that believe in the lie would think who have, who's coming? You think that's Satan? The devil. Because we got a picture of him with a pitchfork. And we got a picture of him with red eyes. See how that trickery is going on? Mm -hmm. The same trickery is going on in the world today. Listen, you better understand the word of God right and divided to get anything out of it. And if you get anything out of this, you can get out of something out of that out there knowing that you're being tricked out there, being cohorts out there, the images out there that you listen to or watch stuff like that ain't no different than being lied to in the religious realm. So my prayer to you is that you'll continue to study, okay? There's lost people out there don't understand the word we just said. But can they understand it? Mm -hmm. Can they start to understand? Mm -hmm. Yes. The Bible says God wants all men to be saved and come to knowledge of the truth. Any of you live long enough to know that all men ain't going to be saved. They choose not to. Some of you know there's people saved that they still won't come to knowledge of the truth. They're still in the religious system bathed in it so deep that they'll never come to knowledge of the truth. So if you're listening today, if you uh, hear for the first time, which many of you are not, so, mm -hmm. but uh, if, you're, if you are listening today, there, there is a way that you can understand that you don't have to spend eternity in hell. Mm -hmm. We know the Bible speaks a lot about hell. And when we was growing up, there's a lot of hell preaching brim fire, wasn't it? Yes. You're going to hell if you do this, and that type of thing. Well, you don't have to do nothing. Still go to hell. You know that? You, you die unsaved. And our only hope is that, uh, that people understand that they can be saved. And, uh, our, and putting their faith in Jesus Christ that he died and buried and rose again for our sins today will set you free. And uh, put you on a life of uh, your spirit and soul and body connected right back to God. Because when you're lost, when you're born lost, guys, your spirit's cut off. Ye were in trespasses and sins. You don't have to be that way no more. Father, we thank you for the day. We thank you for the things given us. And we ask that uh, as we continue our study uh, in Genesis, that um, there's a lot to be said about what you had done in time past. And what is uh, going on in the, but now, and what is going on in ages to come, and what a, what a joy it is to know that uh, those of us that are saved, we're going to spend eternity with you in heavenly places. That you 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 explained that through Paul, but we also know that the ones that are not, Lord, they're they're going to be death and torment for them for the rest of their lives. And we hope that they will hear this message and hear something that will bring hope in you and nothing else. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Until next week.